Thank you for joining me today. This is the Small Business Deserves Big Protection, the Time is Now webinar. My name is Rohit Sani. I am a group product manager within Cisco in the cloud security team, focusing on DNS security. And for the next, say, 25 minutes or so, we'll go through a presentation about small business and protection and security. And we'll have some time towards the end here for some Q&A as well. Our agenda for today is as follows. We'll be talking about challenges that small and medium businesses are facing, like yourselves, what that threat landscape looks like and the reality of it, domain name system as a secret weapon, a solution for you to consider, and as part of that, the Cisco umbrella solution. And as I mentioned, we'll have some time for some Q&A as well. So let's take a look at the small and medium business reality. A lot of things have fundamentally changed around how users work today. You all know this. Your network is changing. You're probably revisiting how your security architecture fits in there. And the new reality of the cloud and digital transformation only make it worse, leading to gaps in visibility and protection, as we highlight here. So let's break down a few of those things. Applications have increasingly moved to the cloud, right, along with your data, infrastructure, user identities. Oftentimes, business is driving that. We're seeing a lot more adoption of SaaS applications. I know I use them. I'm certain that you do as well. And more than ever, individual employees have control over the applications they use. They can go ahead and secure them, log in with some credentials. The risk there, however, is users, because they can do that so easily without the proper vetting from IT, there's risky applications out there. There are those that provide or perhaps take too much access of your corporate info. Networks are certainly also transforming. We have this evolution of SD-WAN, uh, Software Defined Wide Area Network, as you may know. And in fact, someone put it uh, in a meeting earlier today very eloquently, which they said, we're all our own branch locations nowadays as we are working remotely and from home. So as a result of that, you're seeing that increased adoption to the cloud, with that, the mobile workforce, right? More work happening off network, not necessarily on the VPN. You can get a lot of things done by just being on SaaS applications, whether it be building product specs to using Salesforce, et cetera, et cetera, uh, office applications, G Suite applications, the list goes on and on. And finally, the move to 5G, more encrypted traffic, right? 5G marks the beginning of a new era of network security with the introduction of encryption, traffic data sent over 5G radio network, being encrypted, right? There's integrity protection, but there's also mutual authentication and devices to network. And that ultimately has some risks associated with it as well, leads to those gaps in visibility and protection. So what's happening? Well, attackers aren't sitting idly by. Right? It's critical to have visibility into those cloud, those applications, the internet traffic that you possess in all the endpoints because the attackers are out there and they're looking to take advantage of any visibilities that may be taking place. So let's take a look at what those threats look like in the threat landscape. 52% of breaches caused by malicious attack, and that has a huge bearing on the costs associated with dealing with that. I don't have to tell you, you know this based on news, based on articles that I'm sure you've read about prominent organizations that have faced these threats and the amount of money they spend on resolving it, let alone their own reputation, brand name, and, um, and other things that come with it. Fact is also that small and medium businesses like yourselves face the same challenges as larger businesses. And I'd like to say it's not the case, but there's 30 million small, uh, small businesses in the United States alone um, and they're potential targets for internet-based threats, attacks, and malicious actors. And you may think that because of your size, you can kind of fly under the radar, but sometimes cyber criminals view you as low-hanging fruit with a lower level of protection. Perhaps the incident response team, the CISO activity is not there, and as a result, you're a prime target for attacks. This slide has always been very interesting to me as we look at the point at which a detection can take place up until when we resolve that detection. Uh, industry average detection time for breach is 27 days. That's huge. And that's only in 
you know, that detection time, but then to contain it, it takes you an additional 73 days. So when you're talking about 280 days, that's the difference between discovering something in January and just last month in September, actually containing it and resolving it uh, onto its own. That's a ton of time it takes to contain that breach. And that's something that we want to protect you from. Now, if you have to deal with those breaches, you're probably going to look like someone um, that we've depicted here in this image, this gentleman who obviously looks stressed. Um, there's a ton of things that are weighing on you. We get that, right? There's priorities that weigh on you in terms of security. There's the risk that we've talked about in terms of data breaches and the fact that everyone is all over the place around the world. You have a ton of endpoints. You have a ton of remote workers on and off the network. How do you protect them? How do you make sure that they're not compromised in any way? and reel them in and also have just visibility into what they're doing. So enter domain name system, DNS. DNS security is the integral, com integral sorry, component of any holistic security program. And don't take my word on it. Industry analysts have told us this as well, right? So what we're seeing is ESG, for example, believes that the DNS layer is a useful, relatively cost-effective and simple service to deploy to improve detection and response times and visibility into threat vectors. Why? Well, it's useful. It's really cost effective. We'll talk about that. It's simple to deploy. It's really easy to manage as well, as we often say within our own Cloud Security BU, and improves those detection and response times. Why? We'll get into those specifics very briefly. Some reasons, um, actually, right now. 90% of malware use DNS in attacks. Right? So this fundamental phone book to the internet concept, before any sort of IP connection or file execution, we can stop malware before it even takes place. And oftentimes it's not monitored. Not a lot of organizations are using it, but it's an easy to deploy method that a lot of organizations, as I mentioned, are not using. So it's an untapped gold mine in that sense. One in three reported breaches could have actually been controlled had they deployed DNS security. And that has a ton of savings associated to it, as you can see here. In addition to what uh, industry analysts have said, uh, 50 percent, 57 actually percent of uh, respondents of an ESG recent study also said that monitoring DNS traffic for threats does allow for rapid detection and fast response. So something that they were not paying attention to before has become a critical data set to analyze. Um, and most businesses don't have that visibility to billions of DNS lookups and resolutions on a daily basis. You need a tool to be able to do that. And that's where we come in. So uh, let's talk a little bit about why DNS is useful for security. As I alluded to earlier, it is the phone book of the internet. Every domain maps to an IP address. So it's that first step in connecting to the internet. And it actually precedes any sort of file execution or IP connection, as I noted earlier. It's used by nearly all devices in the internet as well. So that is what makes it so effective. And if you haven't heard of it, Cisco Umbrella brings this all together for you. Now, Cisco Umbrella is not just DNS, and we'll touch on that very briefly, but DNS is the core foundation of our product. It's the first step in those internet connections as we talked about that first layer of defense. We refer to it as the added layer of defense at certain times. Um, and what it allows you to do is to learn from internet activity patterns. So you can learn from that and automatically uncover current and emerging threats. You can see from a visibility standpoint, the internet activity across all locations, devices, users, both on and off the network. And of course, we allow you to block. Now, hopefully we do our job and we block things before they're even threats like malware and phishing, command and control, et cetera. Those are all baked into the product and those are options that are either on default or you can select on and off based on the policies that you set. But even beyond that, you can explicitly block requests to malicious domains um, or certain content and security categories that you deem are not appropriate for your environment. So let's look at umbrella DNS layer security a little bit more detail. As I mentioned, it's a major differentiator for Umbrella. And what it really allows you to do is because we're leveraging DNS, it's incre incredibly easy to deploy. Now you might be wondering, I keep referring to easy to deploy, what does that really mean? Well, in fact, it can be done in less than 30 minutes to an hour. We have tons of enterprise customers as we'll talk about that are doing this. The most common deployment is to actually point DNS 
from your internal DNS or DHCP servers to the Umbrella Global Network. It's really as easy as that. Alternatively, if you're using a network device integration like a Cisco ISR router, et cetera, uh, or wireless access points, you have integration points there as well. Once you've done that, now we do the heavy lifting, right? So as long as, as your users from wherever they are in the world are accessing domains, we're gonna resolve those to IPs. If we see that they're malicious in any way, that they're going to any inappropriate sites, or perhaps you blocked things like gambling or inappropriate sites, we'll go ahead and block those before connection is made. We'll present a block page. You have an opportunity to customize that as well. So a ton of hooks and features there. Beyond that, um, if we see that there's risky domains, we have the deployment of something we call the selective proxy, which allows us to inspect URLs and files that we deem risky. Outside of that, if they're safe requests, they're going to Netflix, they're going to Google, they're getting business done, they're going to SaaS applications that are not threatening in any way, those are safe requests, we'll allow them through, and they're off and running. In fact, it's an amazing user experience, and sometimes by deploying our Umbrella DNS service, people note that they see faster internet access um, as a result of that. So what sets us apart from the competitors? There are a ton of other DNS security solutions out there you may be asking. Well, let me tell you. First off, we have the fastest and most reliable cloud infrastructure. And we'll talk about this as well, but over 240 billion requests per day we manage. We've had since 2006, 100% uptime, and we really spend a ton of time and effort into our platform. The stability of our platform is core to the things that we do day in and day out, and we never try to compromise the feature set that we have in favor of the stability of the platform. To us, that is the most important because Tons of users are relying on it. It's an open platform. We're leveraging bidirectional APIs. Customers can easily integrate Umbrella with existing tools to automatically add to our platform, enhance our system. We want to integrate to a, a SIM like Splunk or Logarithm. Um, you have other Cisco products that maybe you're leveraging. We're using our APIs to do the same thing internally to make those integrations work. We have the most predictive intelligence, and we'll talk more about that very soon or, uh, with respect to our security research, uh, the Cisco Talos intelligence team. Um, they all come with the product, right? You're getting the added benefit of all of these um, years of knowledge, as well as a ton of researchers that are doing the pattern matching, the modeling behavior to make sure that malicious activity is blocked before it hits any of your users. And as a result of that, you have that broad coverage. Right? So not only do we have the power of malicious domains and IPs that we had in Umbrella before, but we're continuing to invest in that. We're continuing to have integrations by partnering with other products like um, advanced malware protection, to name one, from Cisco, where you can do sandboxing and um, revisioning and making sure that if something is indeed malicious, that we can go ahead and uh, investigate that even further. So I alluded to this just a second ago, Cisco Talos. Uh, you may know of Cisco Talos, it's the largest non-government threat research organization on the planet. It's an elite group of security experts devoted to providing superior protection to our customers. And so what you can't see, right? What, what, sorry, you can't protect what you can't see. And so we see more threats, we see more malware, and we see more attacks than any other security vendor in the world, right? We have a whole team behind this so you're getting their knowledge, their web reputation, uh, skill set, and uh, metadata effectively in the activity that we block on your behalf. And by the way, you actually have a see-through into that. There's a Cisco Talos site. You can look at web reputation score. Uh, part of our umbrella product actually gives you elements of shadow IT where you, you can look at the risk and the breakdown of that risk. And you'll even have a pivot into Cisco Talos where you can see why we deem something as risky or not. So a lot of transparency around that, because we realize that that's something our users also want to see. How do we come to that agreement? How do we come to that determination? Part of that also includes the security research team and massive amounts of data that they use, right? So they are using advanced techniques like data mining, 3D visualization to identify patterns. We're looking at things like if we have a malicious domain, who went, sorry, where did someone go before? Where did someone go after? That's known as the co-occurrence model. Um, you have other models similar to that, where if we know that there's malicious activity, who else was involved with that? Um, you know, things of that nature that really 
allow us to classify and score domains and IPs such that we can predict what is taking place with respect to that. And if we have any sense that that may be risky for you, we'll go ahead and block that. A further benefit of the umbrella product worth noting is something called investigate. And this is built into the Cisco product as well. This is your live threat intelligence portal, right? So it's a console, but it's also an API and it allows you deeper visibility. So with Investigate, in a single correlated source, um, you can look at things like domains, IPs, autonomous systems, and file hashes. You can type in a domain, you can see why it was considered risky, um, the rich intelligence that we have under the hood, let's say, to analyze and better prioritize those sort of incidents. And as I mentioned earlier, you can integrate that. So there's a ton of our customers, um, very well-known uh, brands, in fact, that leverage investigate from an API standpoint to enhance their threat intelligence. This ends up being a differentiator in a lot of accounts that we have. Without investigate's correlated threat intelligence, organizations would actually need to try to piece this together, almost like a puzzle. So oftentimes, if you have an incident response team, or even if you don't, you yourself, as the security personnel, the admin, need to look up information, you can get into that detail and that level of detail here with the Investigate product. Part of that, let's recap here, is that there's a ton of info that we have access to, right? We have cool data, it's correlated, it's aggregated. You might think to yourself, well, I have access to cool data as well. May be true, but you may have one indicator of compromise IOC, as we point out here. We have a lot more of that at our disposal. It's just based on the massive scale and the information that we see and the relationship around that global context. So we can tell you of all the IP addresses something is hosted on, which autonomous systems it's associated with, other related domains, where they're frequently queried, its reputation, et cetera, et cetera. And that is a benefit that we offer to you as part of the product. Don't take our word for it. You can see a lot of customers have weighed in and provided their opinions around how Cisco Umbrella, and specifically in this case, the Cisco Umbrella Investigate product has helped them as a single place to go where they can research and do that in a matter of seconds. So massive scale, we talked about this, 240 billion DNS requests per day. We have over 100 million active users using the Umbrella platform over 20,000 enterprise customers, and that's not counting all the consumer users that we have using DNS protection for just their home and family shield. We have products like that as well, and across a ton of countries in the world, as you can see here. So we really take that seriously into heart because a lot of people are depending on us for this data, for this intelligence. What else can you count on? Well, you can count on our results. People, uh, users, I should say, that effectively deploy umbrella umbrella in their network, see a 50% reduction in malware straight away. Beyond that, they also report time to value. And time to value can mean many different things. It could be from the reporting intel to a reduction in alerts from other systems that they have, but there's quick time to value. The point is, this is not going to take you months upon months to say, okay, well, why did I spend money on this product? Why does it make sense for me? You should be able to see that very, very quickly in a matter of a week here as per the data. So what does that mean for you and what are your next steps? We encourage you to schedule a demo with us, reach out, uh, go onto the Umbrella website and you can take a look at the information there and have someone contact you. You can easily sign up for a free trial um, that you can do by just do, doing a search for Umbrella. And we have a 14 day free trial opportunity and you can also request a quote. So with that, that concludes our presentation on small and medium business. And I'm definitely open to taking any questions that you may have. All right, I suppose that there may be um, some shy folks out there, which is perfectly fine. What I also have is perhaps some sample questions uh, or things that are popular asked of us when we do roadmap presentations and presentations as such. So there's a couple of things that uh, I figured I'd touch on in the few minutes that we have here. One of them, let me just go back to my screen, is uh, a question that often comes up. How do you Rohit protect against um, folks that are off network? Uh, so I have a ton of endpoints. I have people that may be on network and that's great. But if they're off the network, how do we protect against that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, so we have off network laptop 
coverage, as you can see here, whether you're using the umbrella Chromebook client uh, or you are one of 185 million users using AnyConnect VPN from Cisco, we have a client integration there. If you're not using our VPN product, no worries. We have a lightweight umbrella client that you can also um, install. And with that, you're off and running and you can protect your users. So we have that visibility no matter where you may be on and off the network. As you can see here, and I alluded to this earlier, there's a ton of on-network coverage with integrations to Meraki MR and MX products, to wireless LAN controllers, to our routers uh, in a variety of different series. So those are all available to you. We have the Cisco Security Connector in both iOS and Android as well. So you have that protection all across the board on and off the network. Easy to deploy, simple to manage. All those instructions are there. Go to docs.umbrella.com. You can read a ton more about that. Don't take my word for it. Finally, another question that comes up is, well, I'm a small medium business. Can you share with me some case studies? How has this benefited folks? And so I did want to take a short minute here and share that with you. This is uh, a customer of ours named Farm Credit, a uh, mid-American customer. It does happen to be a financial institution, as you can see here. And so they have needed um, the problem or objective, as it's pointed out here, they need to keep customer data secure. Right, while protecting its distributed mobile workforce, as we were just touching on. So they chose us, and the impact to them has been huge. Right, So they're stopping a ton of attacks, as you can see here by the quote, with Cisco Umbrella than they were able to do before. And so they gained that visibility. They gained uh, a security uh, events visibility chain, but they've also ultimately blocked these threats earlier in the attack lifecycle. And just by deploying DNS security, as we touched on, they're seeing, and I actually did not even believe this number when I first saw it, but I had to check with our product marketing team. They said, yes, really, it's true. They saw a 799% increase, believe it or not, in security blocks in just 30 days, right? So there's a ton of malicious activity out there, especially in the last six months or so with increased activity around um, you know, COVID and, and a bunch of domains that have been spun up there. You've probably seen it with your own eyes. So how do you believe what's true or not you need help in doing that, and Cisco Umbrella can help you. We're leveraging our security researchers, we're leveraging our models to be able to provide you that protection, and you're gonna see that ramp down in alerts from other uh, products that you're using. You're gonna see the blocks. Uh, have we have time to go through a demo? I will show you how easily within our reporting, you can see all those things that are blocked on a daily basis, on a minute per minute basis with our product. So once again, don't take my word for it. Go through a 14-day trial. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain to be able to see what that means. I'm going to take a look and see if there's any other questions that came by. All right, I don't see any other questions. So unless um, our moderator has anything else that I might not have seen, um, I will stick around here for the next few minutes till the bottom of the hour. But um, otherwise, uh, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for listening to us. This will also be uh, recorded or is recorded, and so you can avail of that at some point in the future as well. Thank you for your time.